well, seems like you guys wanted a part two, so here it is. I've read over and taken your comments into consideration and have created a list of five more iconic tornadoes. So let's waste no time and begin with easily the most requested tornado. On May 27th, 1997, one of the most iconic tornado photos and the worst tornado damage of all time would be created as a violent F5 tornado would level parts of the small Texas town of Gerald. The thunderstorm that spawned the Gerald tornado began west of Temple along the flanking line of another thunderstorm earlier in the afternoon of May 27th. As the storm continued, it would drop a rope tornado at roughly 3.40 p.m. Central Daylight Time just north of Gerald. The tornado would then take on a multi-vortex form as it rapidly intensified, taking on an extremely eerie shape as seen in this photo, commonly referred to as the dead man walking. The tornado would then become a massive half-mile-wide monster that would slowly carve its way through the Double Creek Estates of Gerald, wiping all the homes down to the slab, granulating the debris leaving nothing behind, ripping asphalt off a road, and leaving deep trenches in the ground, all of which would result in the deaths of 27 people. The Gerald tornado is iconic for a multitude of reasons, most prominently its dead man walking appearance, but also its horrifying damage which has some mystery around it, as some argue that the damage was caused from the slow forward speed of the tornado and less from the winds, but that doesn't change what happened. But let's move on to an equally scary and deadly tornado. Nighttime tornadoes are extremely scary and dangerous for obvious reasons. But what do you do when there's a tornado coming at your town in the middle of the night that is wider than your whole town and is an EF5 monster? Well, during the evening of May 4, 2007, a supercell a part of a large tornado outbreak consisting of 132 tornadoes would drop 22 tornadoes in a single evening, one of which would be the Greensburg tornado. Shortly after 9 p.m. on May 4th, a tornado from the before-mentioned storm would touch down south of Greensburg, Kansas, and would move to the northeast. It continued to grow in size as the very large wedge tornado approached the city of Greensburg from the south. As the tornado crossed Highway 183 south of town, it reached its maximum width of 1.7 miles wide, where shortly after, a tornado emergency would be issued for Greensburg. The tornado then entered Greensburg, where it would destroy 95% of the town at EF5 intensity, becoming the first EF5 since its implementation earlier that year. Its size being wider than Greensburg, leading to 95% of the town being destroyed, it being the first ever EF5, and the horrifying videos and photos of lightning flashes illuminating the beast, make this tornado incredibly iconic. Speaking of EF5s, this next tornado was an iconic EF4 that arguably should have been an EF5. The Fairdale Rochelle tornado was a part of a small outbreak of about a dozen tornadoes in Iowa and Illinois. The EF4 tornado would touch down in a field at 6.39 p.m. Central Daylight Time on the 9th of April 2015, just northeast of Franklin Grove, Illinois. The tornado would then track for 30 miles over 41 minutes at EF4 intensity, more notably striking the town of Fairdale, Illinois. As the tornado entered the town, Clem Schultz recorded the tornado as it directly impacted his home, capturing some of the craziest tornado footage of all time. Despite being in his attic directly hit by a tornado with estimated winds of 200 miles per hour, he and his dog would survive. His wife and neighbor were unfortunately not so lucky. As previously mentioned, the tornado would be rated EF4 with winds of 200 miles per hour, which is debatable at best. Here's a clip from my video on misrated tornadoes that more thoroughly explains this. The Rochelle tornado is infamous for several reasons, whether it be for its eerie appearance, the devastating damage, or being rated EF4 despite more than at 20 locations, damage was representative of 200 mile per hour winds, one mile per hour short of an EF5. It's almost impossible that at one of those 20 plus locations, the tornado was not possessing winds over 200 miles per hour.
and even past that, several other damage indicators had estimated wind speeds of 170 miles per hour. But the notes state, quote, destruction of engineered and or well-constructed residence, slab swept clean, which is the exact same description, word for word, as the area's rated 200. Besides this, the tornado would leave extremely visible cycloidal marks in farm fields, easily visible on satellite images. Countless well-constructed homes swept away, severe treaty barking, and intense ground scouring should be enough for an EF-5, but it was rated EF-4 with estimated wind speeds of exactly 200 miles per hour. The power, the Clem Schultz video, the eerie structure, and the rating discrepancy would all make this tornado incredibly iconic. This next tornado would also occur during the night, and would also have a rating controversy. On the evening of December 10th, 2021, a violent tornado would rip through western Kentucky, more notably impacting Mayfield, Princeton, and Bremen, Kentucky. The Mayfield tornado was a part of the well-known massive December outbreak of 2021, which occurred on the 10th into the 11th. The Mayfield tornado, as it happened, would be covered and watched by many online as it went through Mayfield and the following towns it would impact. The massive exposure online and widespread damage gave this tornado tons of attention. Not to mention, preliminary reports stated that this could have potentially been a quad state tornado. After damage surveys were conducted, we now know that this was two separate tornadoes, but at the time, this was a big deal. After it had been raided, it became even more iconic and well known, as it is argued as an EF5 to this day. Here's another clip from that video that explains this. The tornado would obliterate a candle factory in Mayfield and would subsequently slice right through the town of Mayfield at EF4 intensity. Near Princeton, Kentucky, the tornado would leave cycloidal marks associated with the most intense tornadoes, and near the end of the path, near Bremen, Kentucky, the tornado would sweep several homes clean, with one DI showing a well-constructed home swept clean with shredded debris. Textbook EF5 level damage. However, the estimated wind speeds would be set at 190 miles per hour, not an EF5. But when you think about it, Several slabbed homes that were well constructed, shredded debris, and intense ground scouring should have earned this tornado an EF5 rating. The damage, online exposure, and the rating argument make this tornado in my eyes already iconic, just 18 months after it occurred. But let's move on to our final entry, and it being a tornado that is very iconic for me and many other Canadians. The Eli Manitoba Tornado, Canada's only F5. During the evening of June 22, 2007, a powerful F5 tornado struck the town of Eli. The tornado was unusual because it caused the extreme damage during its roping out stage at a mere 32 meters in width and moved extremely slowly and unpredictably. The tornado tracked primarily southeast, as opposed to the usual northeast, and made multiple loops and sharp turns. Because Environment Canada adopted the Enhanced Fujita Scale in 2013, there will be no more tornadoes with the F5 rating, making this tornado the first and last confirmed F5 tornado in Canada. It has some pretty beautiful footage of it over its life and its dying moments where it inflicted the EF5 damage by sweeping a home off its foundation and lifting it into the air was caught on video. Not to mention this photo, which might be the most iconic and seen tornado photo ever. It's crazy movement, iconic damage, and accompanying videos, and it being Canada's only F or EF5, make this the most iconic Canadian tornado ever, beating out the 1987 Edmonton EF4, which I will make a video on eventually. And if you did enjoy the video, consider subscribing. I would like to say thank you for the support on the original video, as encouraged me to make a second part. Um, goodbye.